edition of the luxury products that I wish I did not buy. I only anticipated making one video like this, but as time has gone on, I've found that I've discovered other products that I regret buying, so I've just kind of been keeping them in mind and saving them up for the next installment of this type of video. So without further ado, I'm going to jump in. If you're like me, you don't want to sit and listen to someone talk for hours and hours and hours, so I'm going to try to get through this stuff pretty quickly. And yeah, let's jump in. So the very first product is a MAC product, and it is the Mineralize Foundation. And it is in the color NC20. And when I went into MAC initially, because I remember buying this foundation, even though it was at least a year ago, probably two years ago, I remember going in and wanting the powdery foundation like this. I can't recall exactly what it's called right now, but it's like the powder version. And I remember wanting that because I felt like it would give really, really good coverage. But the MAC associate who was there convinced me to get the Mineralize foundation instead because she said it would be better for dry to combination skin. So I gave this a shot and I just have never really liked it. I've always felt like it sits on top of the skin. It feels like a mask. It feels so, so, so heavy. And I wear foundation a lot and I can never detect it on the skin, but for some reason, this foundation, it just feels like a mask, like I cannot wait to take it off. Plus, I think it's a little bit too light for me. For some reason, it pales me out, so whenever I put it on, I just feel like I have a white mask on, and it's, it's not good. So I never, never use it. Why I keep it, I don't know. I don't know why I keep it. Like, why don't you just throw it out? Hey, did you throw out any of the items you talked about in your last Luxury Products I Regret Buying video? No, they're all still sitting in my collection. I I don't know. I don't know why I can't throw them out, but I can't throw them out. So that's what it is. Anyways, MAC Mineralized Skin Finish, or no, MAC Mineralized Foundation was a no-go for me. Next product is by Urban Decay. This is the B6 Vitamin Infused Complexion Prep Spray. Redness reducing, pore minimizing, oil absorbing. Oil absorbing. I cannot talk today. Um, this product sound doesn't it sound just like fantastic, like a miracle worker? I, it, I really think it does. That's why I bought it. It was a total impulse purchase. I bought it a couple years ago. I used it a couple times. It's not bad, but I didn't notice a significant difference, and it's just never something I remember to use. If I noticed a huge difference, I would use this all the time, but I feel like the difference is very, very subtle. It's very minimal. I just don't think it does a whole lot. I think in theory, it's a fantastic idea, but in practice, it just didn't do it for me, and it wasn't worth the money for me. Moving right along, the next product is the Color Me um, Automatic Foundation Applicator. I did a review on this. I dedicated a whole video to this. Um, what I found was that it did a pretty decent job applying powder foundations. It did make the coverage pretty nice and smooth, but the reason I regret buying it is because it didn't significantly increase the, it didn't significantly reduce the time it took me to apply my foundation. So it didn't save me time, it didn't save me effort, you still have to go through and blend everything in. And I just found it to be a little bit awkward to use. I just, I, I never really, I wanted to like this so bad, but I really should have returned it when I had the chance. For some reason I held on to it thinking maybe I was going to like it the more that I use it or whatever the reason I hung on to it. I did a video about it, um, but it just never did it for me. I just never, I never reach for it. I just prefer my regular brushes. All right, flying right through. The next product is a Becca product. I did a Worth the Money Wednesday video on this a long time ago. It was one of the first Worth the Money Wednesday videos I did. This is the Low Light Highlight Palette, and it's basically a cream contour palette. It has a taupe cream darker shade for contour, and it has the Shimmering Skin Perfector cream for the highlight. And I always have a huge problem opening this, but basically the, there we go, it looks like this. If you want a full and in-depth review on this, I will link the video down below as well as the Color Me applicator video, but basically the products are just too dry for me. I know contour creams are supposed to be drier than other types of creams. I realize that. I know they're supposed to stick. I know they're supposed to stay in place, but this is too dry. It's so dry that I cannot use it. Um, the highlighter isn't bad, but for the cost of this, because this was a pretty pricey product, 
for the cost I just I don't use it enough the contour shade is just too dry it's not easy to use it ends up taking up a lot of time and nobody wants that so I've also kind of gotten away from contouring recently I was doing it a lot but lately I've been just going for more of like a natural overall glow as opposed to a chiseled look it's just kind of the mood I've been in lately so unfortunately I do regret buying this next is a MAC shade this is in the color Omega a lot of people have this shade a lot of people use it on their eyebrows I bought it for that reason I felt like it was kind of like a cult shade that I needed in my collection but as you can see well hopefully you can see in the close-up um, I never use this <laughs> I don't use it on my eyebrows I've never even really tried to use it on my eyebrows I think it might be a little too light for me um, it's just not a shadow that I really reach for. It doesn't have a big place in my eyeshadow usage collection. Hopefully, I'll get more use out of it as time goes on, but as of now, it just sort of sits. I have it because I felt like I needed it, but in reality, I just haven't really used it. Okay, only two more products to go. I told you I would be quick. Um, the next, unfortunately, is an Anastasia Beverly Hills liquid lipstick. Can you believe that? I did a video on these as well, raving about them. They are a fantastic product. Just this particular color is not good for me. I thought this color was going to be like a really, really nice, rich pink. Something that I did not have in my collection. But what happened was that it turned out to be a neon bright pink. A bright, bright, bright neon pink. That's not something that I really ever reach for. It's not something that I'm really ever motivated to use. So where I thought, given the packaging, that it was going to be a nice deep pink, it turns out it was just so much brighter than what I thought it was. And it's just not wearable in my opinion. At least not on like a regular basis. And I really wanted to get colors that were going to be super wearable for me. So I got a lot of use out of them. So great product just not a right color for me finally we have another urban decay product it's the urban decay 24 7 concealer pencil this is in the color m16 it's a color that is much much too dark for me i bought this after watching a video of candy johnson's like years and years ago she used these concealers to contour and highlight and i was like that's genius that's awesome but of course we all can't be candy johnson and i just did not get these things to work for me very well um, I just, I don't know if it wasn't the right contour shade for me. I think it was honestly a little bit too warm to be a contour shade for my particular skin. It's a, it's a very creamy product. It's, I'm sure it would be great as a concealer, but I bought this for a contour product and it just didn't work well for that purpose. Um, yeah. Okay guys, so I went through that really, really quickly. I'm proud of myself. Usually I feel like I have to talk and talk and talk about different products and Realistically, you just want to get the down and dirty info, right? I, that's how I feel. Um, so that is the second luxury products I regret buying video. It's kind of sad that I had to make two. That means I've made quite a lot of not great purchases. But hopefully it's all a learning experience and hopefully going forward I'll make fewer mistakes in terms of my purchases. But... Um, yeah, if I collect several more products, I will do another video just like this, but we'll see. We'll see how many more I come across. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe only if you like my videos, though. Please don't subscribe or like if you hate listening to my voice and looking at my face. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Um, but if you do like these videos, please, please go ahead and press the red subscribe button. It would mean a lot to me. And I will hope to see you soon in my next video. Thanks a lot. Bye.